Before I get into uh, explaining some more information about the nightcap on Minjimbal development and how it seems to be very much expanding, I just wanted to recap a couple of basic observations. Now in uh, June 2020, this year, this property up here on the hill, 3222, was sold under auction. For a period of time before then, not much was being said about selling shares and anything like that. Pretty quiet. But the minute that it is sold at auction, suddenly out come all the promos. Out comes AB, out comes Mark McMurtry, out comes Derek Zillman and all the others selling shares and interest in NICAP on Minjimbal. You would think all logic would be up until the point it was sold they'd be trying to sell it, not start to try to sell it once it had been sold to somebody else. Well, maybe they waited till it was sold to that somebody else to actually make sure that it was coming back to them. And if the words of the real estate agent that actually uh, in Mwoolumba that was associated with the auction, if their words are correct, it was uh, Cherie Noble. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I don't think it's Noble unless it's her last name. From NCV Enterprises. Yes, apparently, according to the words of the uh, real estate agent, the, the purchaser of 3222 is NCV Enterprises, Nightcap Village Enterprises. So that in itself is a clear phoenix manoeuvre. If that information turns out to be correct that that real estate agent has said and it has actually been bought because NCV Enterprises, the sole director and secretary, is Cherie Stokes. A bit of a coincidence. Maybe she used, a, I don't know, her, the name she used, Noble, actually bring, comes up with Noble Law that uh, these people have used in the past as well. So that might be another interesting tie-in through Cherie Noble. But anyway, so that's um, apparently who purchased 3222. And why in June, as soon as it was purchased, even though the money hadn't been forked over for it yet, they have been flat out promoting and selling shares, pushing it, bringing in as many people as they can. And that's even before settlement has occurred. So they know that before or after, it doesn't matter. They can continue to push it because they own it. Nightcap on Minjimble members own it. It's come back to them. It's been phoenixed, phoenixed through a very obvious name. But that's only half the story. There's more to the story that involves the commercial because in the Nightcap on Minjimbal documentary that they then came out with to promote and sell all this, they're talking about how they want to build a pub and do all these other things with the shopping district. And I sort of thought, well, you know, that's going to sort of upset a few people because, you know, people have got businesses there and maybe they don't want that. But then now in November, uh, there's no leaseholders. They've all been driven out. The only leaseholders could be said to be associated with the nightcap on Minjimbal. So there's nobody to object. And there are several things that Mark McMurtry has said that didn't make sense, but now are actually starting to make sense. In a promotional video Mark McMurtry did with Max Egan, he talked about getting it rezoned, 
but he sort of get, gave Max that bit of a look as if to say, you know, don't push it on this, I'm going to say something. And then he's saying, oh, yes, but we don't want to say too much about that and give away anything. So it's like there, the seed was planted in my mind. What are you up to? What have you got in mind? And nothing that had occurred up until oh, the last 24 hours actually started to make sense that this is what they had in mind. Because there was another comment that... Um, McMurky made through his Benyini Nyini and said that, oh, it doesn't matter, we're going to bulldoze the commercial anyway. It's like, what? You're going to bulldoze the commercial? And your first instinct is, well, <laughs> that's going to cost a lot of money. Where's that gonna, where are you going to come up with that? But then it comes in that I've showed you how on the opposite side there is this little block that's associated with the caravan park. Well, it's more over here, sort of like that. Now, the thing is that uh, there's been 3222 that people have been aware of and there's 3220 that people have been aware of. But they have been unaware of the activities of other members who have been trying to obtain land elsewhere. And it apparently has worked. It has worked so much that now after they made the agreement to purchase this land and signed the contract to buy the land that they can just come straight up this road here, drive in across here and go in the back way to the property that is attached to the caravan park. I ultimately have no idea how they will will have conceived how they work it in, how they will rezone it or anything. But the um, purchaser for that land on this side of the road is a man called Derek from Sydney. <laughs> now, Derek Zillman is from Sydney. What a coincidence. And yes, Derek apparently does know these people over here but you know he says he's got nothing to do with them well that's actually a little bit of a porky pie for Derek Zillman to say because yeah it's on paper mate You're, you've got shares through Zillman nominees and all these other things and your darky capital and your darky developments and all of these things so it's a little bit tricky to say that you're not tied together when the paperwork actually does lead back to all of you. <laughs> and when I say all of you, yes, we've pretty much mentioned Adrian Brennock, Mark McMurtry, Philip Dixon, Cherie Stokes, um, yes, Derek Zillman. Uh, they're kind of the top players. And they've all been working on their own little manoeuvre. One at 3222, one at 3220, and another to purchase land to make the caravan park viable and now they've completely eliminated all the leaseholders from the commercial. Any plans that they've got in mind to go ahead are not going to be resisted because certainly none of the shareholders can be in a position to object because the majority of shareholders are nightcap on Minjimbal members. Like someone like Rhyme Earth Healer, if he turned around and objected, his opinion's worth nothing because he's only got 200 shares and he's outvoted. And basically they are doing what they want uh, with the Mount Burrell commercial. So after McMurky's comment on bulldozing the commercial and rebuilding it, that would even go more now to work in with the fact of they want to build the pub because you've got to consider that if you've got an alcoholic they do like to be close to well I suppose they can go down the pub and have a yarn to all the guys and you know get hero worship down there it's not so good just going down to the bottle hole and bringing it back home who can listen to him big note himself at home you know so yeah pub and draw in more investors because uh, buying more land certainly requires more debt 
and justification in bringing in more investors. They can milk this for years and years to come. Bringing in investors to justify, yes, we've got the land. And another important uh, aspect that needed to be considered with their whole overall uh, running of it was not only the pub, but to also accommodate for woofers. You know, that free labour that you can get through woofers. The caravan park wasn't suitable for that. And rezoning it where it was is going to be a little bit difficult. So just exactly what does these... What do these people have in mind to rezone the commercial district, the caravan park, or how could they rezone it or move things within the commercial district, like, say, the caravan park to a different area? How could they rezone things to achieve that? Because it's, uh, it is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's, they're they're kind of like a cancer spreading getting bigger and bigger you know and if you don't um well if you don't cut it out it's just going to spread and get worse isn't it until eventually it's it's killed the host (laughs) anyway that was just what i wanted to introduce on this whole area over here now that attaches to the behind of the um uh caravan park uh, is accessible through a contract for purchase of the land that, uh, well, was pretty much, well, what do you expect from some, most real estate agents are never going to tell you the truth. If they do, um, you know, you might not buy. So they'll only sell you the good points. There's only been a few that I've met over the years that, well, I don't suppose they last very long because you need a certain level of no integrity when you're a an agent working on commissions. The quicker you sell it, the quicker you turn it over, the more money you make. And yeah, it's just a greedy industry that people get into. They're worse than car salesmen, much worse. How many people live in their cars? I suppose a lot more since the beginning of 2020, but (laughs) most people don't live in their cars. Bad rep that the car salesman gets for the... (laughs) truths that he stretches are nothing compared to what real estate agents can do, not only to purchasers and sellers, but also when they are constantly interfering as rental agents. They are constantly making up the narrative in between tenant and landlord. And the thing about it, no matter which position they're in, they can dribble any amount of bullshit and never be held accountable. And it seems like this um, salesman in it, uh, the real estate agents, has done exactly that. Spun bullshit, sold it, now prove it. Now prove he didn't know. Now prove that he was only telling you what he thought he knew. Yes. Salesman, you've got to watch every single one of them. They're trying to sell something. And certainly when you're trying to sell something, you don't go up and say, oh, yeah, well, it's good, but... No, you let others discover the but. You just promote the good. And real estate agents are really good at uh, redefining the flaws of a property. You know, I love the way that they can come in and a property's got a flaw and then they suddenly turn it into a benefit because of the way they explain it and sell it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, but people do fall for it. So I just wanted to let people know that, uh, yeah, Mount Burrell Commercial District, good chance it might get bulldozed as they try and build uh, new shops, a pub, a caravan park and accommodations for woofers. So, and they can do it now. There are no leaseholders to object. They've all gone. All the leases are controlled by the nightcap on Minjimble members. So no objection to it. The only objection and the problems they're going to have now is whether council will actually approve what they have in mind. So that's where zoning on other land is going to have to be looked at now and see what happens with that. 
is yes it just never made sense there was always something missing and little by little the uh, especially mark mcmurtry the things that he said that he gave way you know didn't make sense until you find out that wow okay so the property on the other side of the road from the caravan park is now pretty much signed sealed and delivered to more nightcap on member nightcap on mingeable members through Derek Zilman who says he's not actually associated with them well that was false information but the salesman can't he all he has to do is say well that's what he told me I don't check out my customers I don't t check out to see if they're telling me the truth why would I do that because if they're selling something I don't want to find out the truth if it's a lie no better to go with what I'm told rather than what I should know <laughs> anyway that's just an update on what's going on in the greater Mount Burrell area I'd say be prepared for bulldozers to go into the commercial district to move the caravan park. I don't know. Be a good idea to uh, watch all the players and the land that they're manoeuvring around. But if it is indeed true that uh, NCV Enterprises and Cherie Noble, <laughs> or aka Cherie Stokes, has actually indeed purchased 3222. This is going to be very, very interesting. Because that was actually one of the easiest things to prove that they phoenixed it back to themselves. <laughs> they should have picked a harder company to do it through. But then again, it's, oh, it's signed on the dotted line now. They can't pull out, can they? But then I might have been given the wrong information from the salesman, the real estate agent person. You never know. I mean, as I've just said, they do play loose with the truth. They'll tell people what they want them to believe and then say, don't believe the gossip. Ah, they're the ones for re responsible for starting the gossip with all the BS that they tell you. Everyone's trying to figure out what the truth is. <laughs> So that's a version of what could be the truth. I suppose only time as it unfolds will tell us whether it actually is. And on that note, I'm going to say catch you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.